Okay, so before we get to the battle, um, you're probably wondering why would I attack my teammate, and when you get to the battle, you're probably wondering why slacking a Pokemon with 100 base speed is on a Trick Room team, and why I have given it a bold nature. Um, so let me explain. Um, what was it? I've given it Iron Ball to cut its speed in half, thus making it uh, good with Trick Room. Um, if you're slower, then I would obviously give it another item, but as it's for Trick Room, I need to give it an Iron Ball. Well, I don't have to give it an Iron Ball, but otherwise it'd be too fast for Trick Room. And secondly, Bold Nature is because I want Slacking to attack Cofagrigus, and it's actually a special attack Slacking, so Aerial Ace is the only physical move on there. I was hoping if I'd use a Fighting or Normal type attack, it would um, not damage Cofagrigus, Coff but I would still get the Mummy. Uh, activated, but it turns out that isn't the case. It actually has to do damage and make physical contact. Um, although I will be remaking this team for Tribbles Battle, uh, it's going to be a lot more complicated because I'm going to have. Um, I found out Mew is the only person, uh, the only Pokemon that can learn Li Switch and um, uh, Reflect Type, which are the two moves I need to put it off in Tribbles. Um, so basically, Mew would go um, Reflect Type on Cofagrigus and Kofagrigus would then become Psychic, thus I can hit it with Covet, which would then steal its held item, and I, because I'm not going to bother with Trick Room in triples, because Mew is fast, and also I not, I'm not allowed to have a held item if I'm going to use Covet successfully, so then um, uh, Kofagrigus is going to be holding a Potato Berry, so even if I don't get the Covet off, it will still eventually activate on Kofagrigus, and I'm going to keep that as a special attacker, and um, yeah, so Tay Bay would raise Slacking's special attack, and because um, Slacking has a fairly average special attack at 95, and um, then but Ally Switch comes in because um, I'm gonna need to get Cobblecrus is a very important Pokemon because if I'm gonna combine this tactic with other ones which I might have in reserve like that new fossil Pokemon, um, I'm gonna need to get Cobblecrus outside the middle where it can be hit by every Pokemon and switch it with. Um, Mew, and then Mew is going to go Eli switch again, so switch with Slacking, so then that can take a lot of hits, and that can also hit all of their Pokemon in triples, if because it's in the middle, so that's going to be very good, and now we're going to go into the battle. Okay, so uh, here we are, um, I'm sorry about all the Japanese text, um, the ROM is the only way I can record this in 4DS detail, and I'm also s sorry that it's a little slow, um, of course, there's things I can do about that, but it would um, cost money, um, and it it just means I have a little extra time to say things. Because um, uh, if you haven't listened to all the explanation, then you won't understand why I've done certain things. Um, so yeah, that's their uh, snow warning uh, just activated. I'm I'm sure you all know that from fourth gen. Um, and they got a bomb snow, mams, why and I've got slacking and cover grigus, and uh, they've just gone substitute. If um, if you don't know, but I'm sure you know what that is. Um, yeah, and they've just gone the wood hammer, and they get a lucky critical. And the thing I've noticed is criticals are a lot more common in uh, fifth gen than they are in the other generations, or at least fourth gen. And uh, that's mummy ability activated. So now we're uh, a snow warning ability has changed to mummy on uh, bomb snow. Is um yeah I don't know what that is um yeah now slacking goes for air lace on Cofagrigus and I and I was hoping that it would survive and it did just with a 28 HP right there um so now a front on slacking gets changed to uh, mummy ability and that's the the whole reason why they're working together. Because uh, Slacking is a very nasty Pokemon if you can get it working effectively. And the reason I've done Mummy is because um, Gastro Acid, Worry Seed no longer work. And I know the new moves that they've got no longer work either. And as soon as I saw the ability Mummy, I knew it would work very well with Slacking. Um, so I wanted to quickly do this team before anyone else gets any idea of it. Um, it's a bit like... Um, my remove from play Mildek from Yu-Gi-Oh! It took a long time for people to figure out how that worked. 
Um, it took it for as long as it, yeah, well, it didn't work out until it got released into the TCG, and I was doing that one Yugi 2010, pretty much as soon as it came out. Um, although I, I never managed to take it on Wi-Fi. Um, but it was fun to have some friendlies with it. Um, so it's extremely overpowered, I reckon. And, and, and I'm getting very sidetracked. So, um, yeah, the substitute just faded because of the fire blast hit. Uh, which is extremely lucky because I'm pretty sure that Mammoth Swine has slow cloak. And uh, fire blast is only 85 accuracy. Look, the brick break does barely anything. Wait, I think that. Well, it does something, and uh, that's Blizzard, and um, now Copper Grigus is gone, and actually Blizzard does about the same as Brick Break, and that's not even super effective. So, um, yeah, and Copper Grigus is gone, and uh, and just got the hell damage, and the Mammoth Swine has leftovers. Yeah, I actually tried uh, leftovers on Copper Grigus once, and it, it didn't restore as much as I expected. Um, so I decided to go for the Cassid Berry instead. Although, as I said, in triples, when I make this team, it's going to have a Potato Berry. And, um, I'm going to have a Mew with the Reflect type to make changes to Psychics, and I can use Covet. And, by the way, that was Wide Guard. That's going to protect me from Blizzard this turn, which is very nice. Um, <clears throat> so Mammoth Swine, um, survives with, uh, I don't know, 2 HP, something ridiculous like that. Um... I was really expecting it to faint, um, but that w wasn't the case. And uh, they actually get a, a swagger here. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I get lucky on the on the first one, but then it goes downhill. And I suppose that makes up for the both the fire blast hitting. Um, yeah, and also, um, I, I'm about to go Stone Edge. Oh, right, actually, it is something. Wait, no, that's the. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm getting very confused because it's Japanese. Um, that was a hail damage. Now, this turn, I go for Stone Edge. Um, which actually hits Mammoth Swine, despite the Snow Cloak and the uh, 80 accuracy. And the thing is, looking down the uh, Unova Pokemon list, I can really see which ones are going to be UU and which ones are going to be OU. Because um, I've seen so many of the uh, new Pursudo uh, Legendary and so many of that new uh, Lantern type Pokemon. You know, the Ghost Fire one, it's it's very nasty, 145 base special attack. Um, yeah, I was going to use that, but I, I decided not to. It does look cool, but I'm... I just think it's a um, bit too overpowered. Hmm. No, but that's just me. It's it's probably because it kept fainting my Coffer Grigus with its Shadow Ball. Um, so the, and that was before I had the Cassid Berry, obviously. Um, and the things actually go downhill from here. Yeah, I, I try to go for another uh, another Stone Edge on the Glaceon, but I get hurt in my confusion. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know why I didn't go um, Fire Blast on uh, Blazeman, but I suppose I was, I was expecting it to miss by now because I had all that luck in the beginning. Uh, yeah, and their um, their Glaceon actually goes a uh, Toxic. Wait, what is that? I'm pretty sure that was Glaceon. No, it no, it must. Yeah, that was Glit. Because Gengar's normally go Thunderbolt. And unfortunately, that that does a lot more than I expected. Um, yeah, they do have a life orb actually, which makes a change for them for the from the focus sashes I've seen on Gengar and PBR. Um, <clears throat> you know, poison damage, and yeah, I'm surprised they would put Gengar on a hell team. Um, yeah, I, I guess I underestimated this person. I normally overestimate my opponents, but in here I, did, I don't know why I didn't go for Discharge, because I went for a Reflect instead. I reckon that could have... I definitely would have fainted Gengar if I had gone Discharge. I'm not sure about Glaceon, although it would get the stab, so... Yeah, I reckon I could have gone um, Wide Guard and Discharge, I reckon. 
So that would have at least protected Thor. But no, it's not Thor, it's Fro. And it Yeah, no yeah. Yeah, I, I I definitely should have gone wide guard there. Because I I should have known that the Glacier would be a blizzard spammer. So actually actually going for a flick actually cost me the battle, which is a shame. Um I haven't actually had one once on Wi Fi on black and white. But it's still fun though. Um and this was one battle where I got to demonstrate the full potential of this team. <clears throat> so yeah, and in a second I actually with this Yeah, uh, I just surrender it because um, I get the hell damage and the poison damage. There's really no point carrying on because they're just gonna surrender. But no, I'm getting confused. They're just gonna kill Amphros in a second if I don't surrender. So there's really no point carrying on.